I'm at the Sydney Four Wheel Drive and Adventure Show. So today's the day. I'm going to get my pop top put on properly. So everything's basically in position, ready for 11 o'clock today. Just out front of the four wheeling uh, content creator stage. You've got a couple of Ronnie Dale's trucks over here. So we're in a pretty good position. So the guys are just unbolting the temporary roof we put on just so I can get to the show getting it all ready for 11 o'clock today. So it won't be much longer and everything will be properly bolted on. Put some of the glue is going on now. It helps seal up the roof. And then you can put the bottom frame on top and start bolting that down. Well, the bolts are still going in, but it's almost done. So soon, I think they might be putting the Ethan bed platform on next. It's looking good, though. He said it's a beautiful weather for it. It's a bit windy, but it's not too bad. It was a bit of a shower last night, so it wouldn't be good for this if it had been showering today. Roof is on and the struts are in place, so it's now freestanding. It's basically being bolted in. So there's not much else left now, just the bed platform to go in. Now it's looking good. You can see the pop top bed platform now. Just getting the final bolts in for the hinge, so that will soon be able to lift that up and put the struts on as well. That's basically, you can see clearly here, it's a pretty nice space here for me to lie in. Loads of headroom here for me to sit upright as well if I need to. The last of the camps is going on. Just a matter of clipping it into place and the Velcro to keep it all there. The last year clip's done. Pretty much complete. It's going to be a pretty record time, I'd say. About one hour, 15. So that's basically the installation complete. It's just a matter of now back at the workshop, finishing off the last few things, a few extra bolts, and then getting all the interior put back together, all my electricals, figuring out where to put all the HF wiring and rewiring in the lights and some few other things. So that worked, that worked pretty good. The installation at the show was a success. So it got some great exposure for me, as well as the opportunity to get up on stage there and meet some of the other big YouTubers, but now it's time to put everything back in and figure out how I'm going to run some of the cabling, so we've got some ideas on that. But I'll start reinstalling some of the brackets I've made up and we'll work from there. I've got the rear fire extinguisher mount back in, so that would be my primary rear extinguisher, two kilograms, and I've decided to change out the front one kilogram to one of those fire strikers, which is a new product that's been introduced into Australia recently, and it's a much lighter type of, if we've got it right here, if I've got to just grab it. Here it is, fire striker. So I'll use this instead now, and instead of the one kilogram extinction in my head, this will be up right up front. So just to reduce weight again, and this is a longer lasting product as far as extinguishing fires go. It takes a little longer to put all the brackets back in because the holes are in slightly different places. So I've had to drill out some of the mounts holes so that get the bolts back in. But it's coming together slowly, which is good. Get it all done eventually. And we've got this beautiful little electrical conduit so I can easily run my cables in here now. 
for my HF and other bits and pieces and any future upgrades should I need to run lighting to the back or for wiring. Just runs the whole length down and I can connect it up to the front. So it's easily, now that I don't have the roof lining that I used to run them down along, so it's a good little system. Yeah, a few more things just to work out. So I have the mounting kit for the solar panels. It's just a polycarbonate strip and I just put self-adhesive double-sided tape on it, foam back tape. So that's meant to be what I use to get the solar panel off the roof and it allows for any flexing and movement. So it's not completely glued down and also allows for airflow underneath so it should be a bit cooler and hopefully that will prolong the life of the panels. This is one I prepared earlier, so it's all finished. You can see all the gaps it allows underneath, so it should allow the panel just to gently flex and move with the roof in any way. And plenty of air cooling there and water to flow underneath. So time will tell how this works out, but this is what's recommended by the company that sells the panels, and they said they've done a lot of testing and tested both cold and hot temperatures, and they're Australian based, so if this is what they recommend, then I'll give this a go. The panels are fairly expensive, almost around 500 Australian dollars each. So if this prolongs the panel many more years, then I'll, it's worthwhile, I think. And here's the 150 watt panel. Very beautiful. It has a special coating on top, which is meant to be UV resistant. And it's all somewhat textured and, and rippled. And that's meant to allow the surface of the panel to clean off much easier. So it won't have little blotches of, of filth. It helps it run off, apparently. But yeah, very nice, very, very thin. It's only probably, I think, four mil or so thick. And it's meant to weigh about 3.3 kilograms, I think, from memory. It's got a slimline junction box, so it's minimal size as well, which is good. And two long cables, so you can wire it up yourself. And it's the Rad Power brand. R-A-D, P-O-W-E-R, and it has the sun-powered Gen 3 cells, which are the currently the most efficient cells made by sun power. So it's pretty impressive, 150 watts in this size, which is, you know, reasonably a bit smaller than the other panels. I'll put them side by side and we'll just take a closer look. So you can see the size difference between the new technology and the older, cheaper panels. So this, these are both 150 watts, or I think they were technically 155 watts, but it's about the same. And you're gonna see that this only goes up to about here, whereas this, all this extra panel, so it's much more efficient, it doesn't need to be as big. And two of these will take up much less room than two of these big panels I previously had. And you can see just how much framework I had to have in there to support it all, with all the glass and aluminium. So that would be really great at weight saving. progress is going well with all the lighting. We've got the two interior lights for the back for the reading lights. They come with USB little ports as well so I can easily read up when I'm in bed. Just finished installing the rear grab hammer. So just, I just like to have two, one at the front, one at the rear for just for any, any case, you know, crash into a creek or something and the front end's gone, I might be able to crawl out the back easily, right near the back door, smash it out. So that's good. So really now the only thing left is like the HF radio, those big electronics, just waiting on the front plate to be, to be put together. But all the side lighting around the sides all completed as well, so it's almost finished. I'm just mounting the HF radio now, and we've decided to put the main breakout box behind the actual fa fa fascia or facing plate, so it's all hidden away, so it'd be a lot more nicer installation.
The Pop Top camper build is now complete as of yesterday afternoon. So here's the finished product. Looks absolutely brilliant. So it's been a pretty big three weeks for me here in Sydney. But yeah, it's good to finally get it all finished. Everything's back together the way it basically was or upgraded. And I've got to head now to Brisbane and finish off the last of my few electrical changes I need to do. Let's just take a quick look now and I'll do a proper video later of the conversion. So all the lighting's back in place. So we've got all around side lights. And the side, we've got the sail track for my awning, uh, for my, my tarp, so I'm gonna slide the tarp in. I still need to get my tarps modified, but I'm gonna slide that in. That way I'm not carrying loads of weight and expense of a big fancy awning on the side. Just put it in, put it out. Everything's nicely repainted, resprayed, so all original. More lights, more sail track at the back. This one's just a shorter one because it would have fouled on my other parts here. I've got 300 watts of solar on the roof. So they're my slimline panels. Only weigh about 3.3 kilograms each. We're reversing cameras back in position. More lights, got, like I said, they've got the dual lights, one here, one there. So I found last night doing a bit of reversing it was much better spread. I can see out both, both sides quite clearly. And then more sail track. So yeah. Oh, and my new hinges, I put these on too. So I'll probably need to take these off and get them powder coated. But the door opens so much nicer now. It's, there's no play. There's nothing there. And it closes like first time now. So there's no more slamming. So I still need to do the other other side. Inside, where the, the biggest magic has happened. So here's my, my bed platform. Get all the new controls here. Put the lights back in for my two side lights. The HF radio mounted here. The speaker's now here. Got the grab hammer just in front of me. And my wheel tire monitor just in the corner. So that's basically the same now. And we'll pop the roof. Here's my upstairs bedroom now. So I've only had a chance to sleep in it like 30 minutes during the Sydney show one morning. So that'll be coming up on probably Monday night. A couple of days time, I'll be able to just sleep in it for the first time. I got, <coughs> got the extra bed. So this is like a much more expensive bed, but it's better for my back. It has all these like wooden slats. So it allows for the, the spine to, to find its own position compared to a flat board and a mattress. So I'm hoping that helps with the back pain a bit. You see the upstairs light and then all these big tear down windows. So, I want all three windows, so I get a nice big panoramic view here. And then your bed. Let's push that up. And now I've got standing room. I can basically walk all the way up to about here. Sort of half the where the box is basically finished is where our head hits, but still I can you know, squat down a little bit and move so much more space to swing my arms, get changed in the morning, get dressed. So I still need to figure out my storage system, but that, that won't be until next year. I've, I've kind of blown my funds this year. And that'll be it for the mods, but I, I need some time now to actually live in this car and get some ideas of where I want to put my boxes and, and the storage shelves I'm thinking of, of making. So yeah, very, very awesome conversion. It's going to be life changing for me to have all this room. Two stories basically. I can store more stuff upstairs. So my bedding and, and, and pillows and sleeping bags. I can get all that upstairs and out of some of these boxes. So I'll be able to re reduce at least one box. Yeah. So yeah, pretty big, pretty big uh, three weeks. But the Sydney show was a success, I think. Met plenty of people. So thanks for those who come along and said good day. At least 20 subscribers, I'd say came up to me during the three days, which is yeah, really great effort, I think, for someone who's still fairly small on YouTube. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful build. 
but I'll do a more yeah, thorough look at the build uh, in another video with all the other things. But I've got to go back to Brisbane now, install another light and remove my lithium battery and put it under the, under the seat as well as remove the secondary battery. Now all up, it was meant to weigh about an extra 80 kilograms for the pop top with all the roof mods and the bedding and platform and that. Uh, I removed all my solar panels on the roof, the big heavy ones, the roof rack, the secondary battery and the bed platform I used to sleep on. So that should, should remove like more than that addition. So it should be about 20 kilograms less after conversion. But I'll know once I get it all packed again and put it on a weigh bridge and just check how everything now distributes with the weight and the axle loads. So that's still to come. Huh. Beautiful, yeah. Thank you to the Expedition Centre, Daniel, Ben and David for doing a great build here for me. It's good we could actually get it done this year. I was just going to put it off and wait until another year, but the opportunity to come up, so I get to spend the next couple of months at least trying to, to finish this year's trip. I'll see how far I get before it gets too hot. Yeah, beautiful. Quick look outside. There it is, my touring Defender. Ready for another great trip into the outback. It's my home away from home, basically. I'm back home again. A quick two day drive back from Sydney. So I'm gonna start working on the rest of the electricals. I'm still waiting on some parts to arrive, but I'll start with removing this secondary battery. It's 120 amp hour AGM. It weighs about 36 kilograms. So I'm getting rid of that because I've found that having two batteries, it's probably no real point that the 100 amp hour lithium I have is just so good at, at providing you know a full 80 to 100 amp hours of power and it charges up real quick. I've got the DC to DC charger connected to it and now the 300 watts of solar on the roof going into it. So carrying all this extra battery around isn't really worthwhile. Plus I found this year while trying to edit on the road, doing really big productions, the laptop draws too much power each day from doing a long 10 plus hour a day editing. There's just no way for the battery to, to handle that load of, of, of work. So that I, original idea of having so much power that I could edit long term on the road, it's, it's, I just have to pull into caravan parks and use their power to do it. So this is gonna go. Everything, the two different auxiliary fuse boxes will be wired up just to the lithium, which I currently have just down here. It's a little mount I made up last year. So this will go underneath here again and give me that space back therefore for more storage configuration I've removed one of the old regulators this used to power the secondary battery from the front solar panel but it's now unnecessary so it's something else which can make a bit more room and I'm going to likely remove some of these circuit breakers up over here now where the space used to be so it's a bit more easier access in order to cut the power to the rest of the car so sort of just basic stuff piece by piece I can already feel the weight reducing this this alone probably weighs nearly a kilogram or something maybe a bit more just the heavy-duty bracket I made but it served its purpose it's just a shame that I have so many extra holes now in the car just a few there through the, the boards over the years I've kept modifying the car and I'm starting to get a few too many holes. Another hole just down here, so I'm gonna to have to start going around and trying to plug a few so I don't get as much dust and water coming up in inside the car. That's still later to do. But if you haven't seen lithium before, this is a DCS 100 amp hour lithium I purchased probably a year or something ago. So anyway, it weighs about 13, 14 kilograms and it's got the full 100 amp hours available to me that I can use if I, could, if I do a full 100% depth of discharge, but 80% is generally the, the recommended max, but you can take it all the way down according to the manufacturer. So this will go now under the seat and free up the space here so I can get my jerrys across a bit more and have a bit more of a space over here. We'll see how I configure everything. Let's get... So 
the lithium's in and two of the circuit breakers are in position so I'm just gonna throw back in the starter battery and when the rest of the wires show up probably next week in the mail I'll be able to add the remaining wires from the DC to DC charger and extend them through to here so that's pretty much most of the wiring done then that's it almost ready to go trapping again just while it's out I'm gonna have a quick look at the battery it needs a bit of top up on some of the cells it's just interesting how quickly in the outback though the water or the the water evaporates out. This is probably the second time I've topped it up this year. It's good to check on though. I've just been busy making up some new cables for where the circuit breakers now are. So I've got some nice 6 BNS cable, nice and thick, all crimped on connectors. So this should all fit in together now and just got to wait for the last few wires to arrive in the mail. For those interested, your door is held on by these little captive nuts that just clip in into the holes. And then your bolt just threads into that and clamps it onto the A-pillar. Very basic. I'm lucky there's no rust inside, had a quick look and everything looks really good so these are, are still structurally sound. So I'll just put on the last couple ones here and and then to bolt up the new hinges to the store and then position it in place and then once it's all aligned I'll tighten everything up. The new hinges are on the other side. It's all tightened up, all adjusted. The door strike is also adjusted so we basically close this first time. Nicely powder coated black. Unfortunately the other side I threw out the originals already and these aren't all the same, they're opposites, so I couldn't put these on the other side in order to take the door off. So I may have to try and take the door off and get my parents to take the parts down to get powder coated. Otherwise, I'll just keep the other side stock in the galvanizing and deal to deal with it later. I've seen these hat savers before, which allow a hat of my hat here to get put up against the roof. So it all mounts up and keeps it out of the way and keeps it safe. So I'll put one of these in as well. For extra storage, I found this camp cover system. I saw it on 4x Overland and it fits perfectly underneath my bed platform. So I've already pre-drilled some of the holes. It has this mounting system, but I couldn't use that because it's it just no way for it to mount in to where these slats are. I have to put them all the bolts through where I can actually drill into the steel. So I've drilled holes through the canvas itself. And I'm hoping that with enough bolts it'll help spread the load and won't cause any ripping or tearing of the, the canvas but it's a pretty tough canvas and a nice little way of just storing all the odds and ends I probably won't put anything too heavy in it anyway mostly I'm thinking spare toilet rolls and and paper towels something lightweight that normally is bulky but floats around so I'll install that now and the finished installation easy access whether I'm standing or sitting down to reach up inside here and get any of the zippers I need so just enough room to stick some stick a few things stick my paper towels in there perfect size to fitting so keeps those lightweight things out, out of the way nice little system yeah almost looks fairly stock I just used the dome headed bolts or no nuts dome headed nuts and washers to help spread the load around and just make a nice finish on it Oh, I think it looks pretty good. Shouldn't have any issues holding lightweight stuff up there. And that completes my Defender Touring Build 2.0 for the time being. At least until I figure out the internal storage system and I begin building that in probably a year or more. So be sure to subscribe if you're not already to follow along on my future travels around Australia exploring national parks, bushwalks and 4x4 tracks and click the bell notification to be updated of the latest releases of videos. So if you'd like to help support the creation of more videos, please consider becoming a patron or visiting my website and seeing one of the several ways you can contribute to my filmmaking. So thanks for joining along on this build and I'll see you out on the tracks. Thanks for watching.
If you've enjoyed this video and would like to help support the creation of more videos and see behind the scenes and bonus content, join me on Patreon. Click on the Patreon button on the site now. Thanks for watching.